Hi, thank you for joining us for our um, academic webinar series here at McKendree University. My name is Alexander McWirt, and I'm an assistant director of admission here. And today we are going over um, the Division of Humanities. So we're very excited to have you join us and learn a little more about all the options through our, the division and the different academic programs. Um, joining us today, our speakers are uh, Professor Nicole DeWall from the Department of English and Professors Richard Murphy and Professor Sarah Trask through, from the Department of Communications. And at this point, I'm going to let them take over um, and then we'll have a presentation at the end and then um, answer any questions you may have. All right. Well, I will get us started. Um, again, thank you all for uh, for choosing McKendry and, and attending our our session on the humanities. Um, go ahead to the, the next slide. Um, so I'll just introduce briefly, and then um, Dr. Dewall and Dr. Trask will uh, elaborate a little bit more on this. But the humanities division is made up of uh, we have about five majors and several minors. Uh, we have a major in communication. Um, in that major, we talk about, um, we, we, it's not just public speaking, it is everything from interpersonal communication uh, to uh, workplace communication to strategic and public communication. So we talk about all of that. And we have an English major, writing and literature. Um, our journalism program, um, we do have a minor in that, but I'm telling you, if you, um, one of the cool things about McKendry uh, that I was, that I absolutely love when I first got here is you can start writing for the McKendry Review, which is uh, the newspaper, uh, the, the web newspaper for our university. You can start writing from day one. And so if that's something you're interested in, um, you can hit the ground running there. We also have majors in philosophy, uh, religious studies, and, and Spanish. So that's what the humanities division is made up of. Uh, and so we decided we're, we wanted to start a little bit with, uh, with this idea of college and careers. And so uh, according to the National Association of Colleges and Employers um, in 2018, um, if you hit that first button, uh, the average college graduate, graduate uh, changes their job about four, every four to six years. And what that means is the days of going, you know, getting that first job and staying there until you retire, those days are pretty much over. It's very rare to see that happen. Uh, but the, the interesting stat that, that comes after that, that I, that I think is, is significantly important is that the average college graduate makes about five to seven career changes um, within their lifetime. So uh, what's, ha what's, what's not happening is we're not leaving college and then staying at the same job for the rest of our lives. Those days are pretty much over. We're changing um, and shifting. And, uh, and, and so to build on that a little bit more, about 40% of the workforce has been coming back to college uh, uh, and returning for additional education, which means that, uh, that they need more and more education. All right, so what does that mean? Well, we, we're looking at two big questions, right? Well, number one is what are future employers? So you're looking, you're going to college, you wanna get that job, what are the skills uh, or what are the things that the future employers are looking for? Or if you're someone that's interested in going to law school or graduate school or moving on, what exactly are they looking for? Um, and of course we have an answer for that. Go to our next slide. Um, what, what they're looking, at least uh, according to the American Association of Colleges and Universities uh, in their recent survey in 2018, uh, they said about 93% of employers, so that's almost all of them, um, said that they're looking for a demonstrated, one, a capacity to think critically, uh, two, communicate clearly, and three, solve complex problems. And they said that is actually more important, those three skills are actually more important uh, than, a can, than a candidate's uh, undergraduate major. So they're not looking for, you know, what is that degree? What does it actually say? They're looking for the skills. And so how do you communicate that? Or how do you convince uh, a, an employer that that's what you have? And you're in luck because the, the humanities, uh, excuse me, the an humanities really focus on those. And so I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Trask, and she's going to tell you a little bit about what the humanities are. 
I am actually um, excited to be able to not only remind you all of the um, certain programs within the humanities department, um, but also introduce you all to the faculty that make up the humanities. And so once again, when you look at these uh, different majors, we have communication studies, English, uh, journalism, Spanish philosophy, um, professional writing is part of the English uh, major and then religious studies. So Alexander, if you would flip the slide so we have the opportunity to meet our English faculty. Every individual that you see on this slide makes up our English faculty. So we have Dr. Brenda Boudreau, Dr. Jessica Campbell, Dr. Nicole DeWall, who you will hear from in a little bit, Dr. Jenny Mueller, Dr. Martha Patterson, and Gabriel Shapiro, who actually not only is in the English department, but is also the lead of our journalism minor. In addition to our English faculty, Alexander, if you want to flip this slide, uh, you'll see both myself and who just spoke, Dr. Murphy. Uh, we are responsible, or the faculty members responsible, for the communication studies and the public relations studies major, uh, soon to be known as communication major. And so that's us two as the faculty. Alexander, if you want to click the next slide. We have our final three faculty members. Dr. Aurelie Caprone is an associate professor of Spanish. Uh, she also teaches our foreign language as a general education. Uh, Dr. Dwayne Olson is a professor of religious studies. And finally, we have our division of humanities chair and professor of philosophy, Dr. Zana Wadi. Uh, those combined, all of those faculty members make up the faculty in the division of humanities. I always think it's really great to put faces with names, um, but I also think it's really important to hear uh, what the humanities is. And so with that, I will turn the floor over to Dr. DeWall. Thank you so much, Dr. Trask. I'm so happy to be talking with you tonight about something I'm really passionate about, which is this uh, this word humanities. And I don't know if it's a word that we use very often in everyday parlance, but um, what does it mean? Well, the humanities is the study of the stuff that makes us human, essentially. I think that's the best definition. Um, so we are, uh, we are the division at McHenry that studies the big questions of life. That's another way to think of it. So. Um, science can tell us uh, what, how to live, but humanities tells us what we live for is another quotation that I really love. So again, we ask the big questions and these usually come in the form of religion and philosophy. We ask questions like, um, how do people experience life in different cultures? How have people experienced life in the past? What can we learn from those people and how do we tell their stories? That are, those are the essential questions of the humanities division. Now by entering uh, McHenry University, you'll also be participating in a much older and more uh, established tradition called the liberal arts. Now this word liberal is also a word that we don't use very often except in specific contexts. Usually now when we talk about the word liberal, we're talking about politics. Um, we want to go back to the origins of the word. The word liberal actually means freedom, just like the word liberty means freedom. So these are the skills and disciplines that in ancient Greece, those folks defined the things that we need to learn in order to live a free life, essentially. Um, so that tradition is really, really powerful. It goes back a long time and it's something that you will be continuing in your studies at McKendry University. So liberal arts is foundational to McKendry instead of what we call vocational education in which we, we prepare you for a specific career, a liberal arts education, and you can flip the, the slide you can get a, an idea of how our mission statement plays into this. Instead of preparing you for a specific job that probably will be obsolete in five years, we prepare you to live um, a life of curiosity and an ethical life and to be a good citizen. Those are the pillars of a liberal arts education. Um, so essentially, we want you to be able to go into the world and be flexible for whatever comes your way, which as we know right now is really important. Our liberal arts majors are doing very well in times like these, these very unusual times. Um, and you can go to the next one. I think we have a highlighted section of our, 
of our catalog. So history and traditions, we provide our students with a rigorous, broadly based liberal arts curriculum joined with specialization in a specific discipline. So not only will you take classes in a variety of different subjects, you will also be prepared to enter a specific vocation. Um, but that is in uh, a symbiotic relationship, I would say, with the liberal arts broad based education. So you can go forward. All right. We really want to um, emphasize this. <laughs> Again, the liberal arts tradition is integral to what we do at McKendry. And so um, we believe that it is the best way to make well rounded whole human beings. So you can go to the next slide liberal arts curriculum. And these are just some of the words that we associate with the liberal arts. So um, cr critical thinking, of course, imagining oneself as an historical being. And I would say perhaps the defining characteristic of a liberal arts education is um, the ability to be empathetic to other people because um, it's very, very difficult to see the world through anyone else's eyes but your own. And the liberal arts are a way of training yourself in order to see the world through others' eyes. So compassion and empathy is also really important for the liberal arts. You can go ahead up to the next slide. Okay, um, back to the career ramifications of our liberal arts education. So um, most employers want the exact skills that liberal arts graduates demonstrate. So they want things like critical thinking. They want things like the ability to communicate. And again, this empathy and compassion piece is really important to employers as well. So we have one more slide to talk about humanities. Also, um, those folks who majored in the humanities and liberal arts, they are the people who um, change the world, essentially, right? These are the people who are curious, who are able to pull different thoughts from different areas of experience and synthesize those thoughts. These are big vision people. And so I'm sure you're not surprised that almost 60% of the CEOs in the United States have some degree in the humanities. So you will be in good company when you choose a major in our division. All right, you can go to the next slide. All right, um, also in the humanities, we like to think of this concept of bigger than me. So imagining yourself not, um, not all alone, but as being interconnected to everyone around you. And also, again, we wanna focus on sort of the big ideas of what it means to be human and the big ideas of human existence. So that's what we focus on in the humanities. You can go to the next slide. All right, I am going to turn it back over to my colleague who's gonna talk about the McKendry Advantage. Sarah, thank you. Dr. DeWall, I appreciate you giving such an eloquent uh, introduction into the humanities. I think this is the point in time where I mentioned that as an undergrad, when I was choosing uh, where I was going to go um, to school, uh, it was a big decision for me. And I would have to say that at the young ripe age of 18, I didn't understand uh, what the humanities de department or division was, um, but I was lucky enough to actually choose McKendry as my undergrad experience. So, uh, and I also majored in communication studies and took courses in philosophy and religious studies and English and literature and Spanish. And so, I chose McKendry, maybe not understanding humanities, but because of that articulate uh, conversation you just had, Dr. DeWall, I would have definitely continued to still choose McKendry. But let's talk about McKendry as a whole as well, because I think our division is something that's very special, but I think McKendry is something that's very special. And I think one thing that McKendry can offer is a very supportive learning and living environment. Now, once again, I lived on campus at McKendry, but friends, that was <clears throat> years ago. Uh, but I do know from experience in working with my colleagues in, in the residence halls uh, that they are, are doing what they can to make sure that they create and establish a community that helps build and form meaningful connections. Uh, and so by choosing to live on campus, you are part of this supportive living environment. But I think something bigger than that is the supportive learning environment that McKendry offers. We offer several services to those students uh, as they transition 
into their, their college career. Uh, we offer tutoring services and student success services uh, that really help encourage this supporting learning environment um, outside of the classroom. Uh, within the classroom, I am incredibly proud of my colleagues who focus that one-on-one -on -one attention and individualized um, kind of goal to help each individual student. Uh, we are a 14-1 uh, faculty student ratio depending on major, but I think that's something that, that needs to be brought up more often. That means that as a student, you're going to be sitting with students that you are going to learn their names within the first couple of weeks and the professor is going to know your name. So in addition to kind of being or having that individualized focus, all of our faculty here are really worried about you and your success. And that's one thing that I really appreciate about McKendree as a university as a whole. And then the final thing is, uh, in addition to professors and staff wanting you to succeed in the classroom, because of that 14 to one faculty to our student to faculty ratio, uh, our professors truly try to develop and build those relationships uh, that's going to offer you lifelong mentorship. And, and what I mean by that is you may have either myself or Dr. DeWall or Dr. Murphy or any of the faculty from the humanities divisions for a general education course uh, where you come in and take a, a first year course with them, uh, but you'll always know where to find each one of those faculty long after you've ended your time in their classroom. And that's something that I really think McKendry offers uh, that should be celebrated, um, that we are uh, people that enjoy those relationships that we get to form with our students. Um, in addition to that, Alexander, if you want to, to flip this slide, in addition to that, kind of going back to that individualized and specialized focus one-on-one, -on -one, uh, when it comes to you choosing your major, McKendry does a really excellent job of laying out exactly what is required of you to graduate. And so you'll see on this slide that there is a link to the academic catalog. Dr. DeWall showed you a little glimmer of that catalog, but you um, even now could go to our website and open the academic catalog and see the courses that are offered for you um, to kind of develop you in your major. Uh, but the other thing that McKendry offers or kind of pushes is this four-year planning sheet and a general education checklist. And if any of you are interested in obtaining these um, four-year planning sheets or general education checklist, once again, they can be found on our website, but at the end of uh, this presentation, you're more than welcome to reach out to any of us to for us to be able to help you with these planning sheets. But Alexander, if you wouldn't mind clicking on that four year planning sheet, I think it's really beneficial to see how uh, laid out we tried to make uh, your major. And so lucky for you, or maybe lucky for me, this four year planning sheet is actually a communication for your planning sheet. But for any major you decide, you have access to this planning sheet that allows for you to know what courses are recommended so you can graduate within that four years. Perhaps it may not open and that's okay. If we didn't have a technological difficulty, would it even be 2020? Um, but I promise that there is the opportunity for a four-year planning sheet uh, that really lays out, these are the gen eds you should take um, here are some courses you may want to take as your first year as an English major uh, or in your sophomore year as a religious studies major. That Once again, that four-year planning sheet really spells out exactly what you need. Uh, another thing that McKendry offers is a program evaluation. Once again, it really is just focusing on you uh, and individualized success for you. And so our program evaluation is easy access for you to know how you move through your course planning to make sure you're on track to graduate. But with all of that being said, uh, once again, when it comes to you and the major you choose, we are going to work with you, whether it's faculty or staff, to make sure that you're doing everything that's necessary to graduate on time. With that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Dr. Murphy again, who's going to chat with us about what we can do or what you can do outside of the classroom. Yes. Um, so this is the part I get most excited about um, because, I, I, of course, I love the classroom and love what we we're able to do there. But uh, what you can do outside of the classroom uh, for the size of McKendry, um, I'm just impressed in all the things that you're able to do. So 
Um, the first thing that you can and do, if you want to click that first link, uh, we have a ton of clubs and organizations. Now, I um, previous to, to coming to McKendry, I came from a school that was slightly bigger. And so one of the things I thought when I first took this job is, well, there's not going to be as many clubs or organizations or opportunities to do things. Um, and I was wrong. In fact, uh, McKendry has more clubs and organizations um, than most schools its size and, and even uh, some that are bigger. So um, so many things you could do. We have honor societies for almost all of our majors. Um, we have uh, fraternities, sororities, um, basically anything that uh, you're interested in, we have something uh, for, for you. Um, and of course, there's a website, um, as Dr. Trask was saying. Uh, so a lot, if you, if you want to see what, all the specific things we have available, um, you can check that out on uh, mckendry.edu. Um, the next thing we'll talk about um, is, and Ian, you, you know how I feel about this, the McKendry Review. So uh, if you go to mckreview.com, um, uh, um, you can see this is a student-ran newspaper. Um, and, and when we say student-ran, I mean, literally, they write the stories, they um, edit it, they publish it. Uh, we do have someone that, um, that mentors the students, but, but he doesn't actually... Uh, he's not actually a part. He doesn't write any of the stories. So this is completely student ran. Um, and so, like I said, you can start writing for the review um, as soon as your first day that you step on campus. Um, and so that's an excellent opportunity. Um, what we don't have on here and what I'm what I'm most excited about, because it's what I'm uh, one of the things that I help run is the uh, the McKendry uh, podcast studio. And so we're actually launching relaunching that uh, this spring. We have about 10 members. Um, that are that are going to start putting out podcast content, and so um, be checking your webs or be checking your emails for that. As soon as we start getting some content, you'll be able to hear that. But we have a studio, we have um, state of the art microphones, we have a, a pretty impressive setup there. So um, you can you can again you can start doing that your first your first year on campus. And then of course we have uh, two places that you can get published uh, just here on campus. We have the Montage um, and that's where you can, uh, we, we publish a lot of uh, creative writing, a lot of essays. Um, so the stuff that you do in your English classes um, and, and creative stuff that you're writing, you can get published there. And then we have the Scholars and uh, you can check out all of the cool research that our students are doing across campus. Um, so research, not only in, in the humanities, but also in the sciences and, uh, uh, and everywhere else. So lots of places you can get published and lots of things that you can do. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Uh, how could I forget this last one too? Uh, we also have an opportunity, we have lots of opportunities to study abroad. Um, and so we just, we recently had a new person take over. Her name is Lauren Neighbors and you can get in touch with her. Um, really easy and she can start uh, if you're interested in, in studying abroad and what we mean by study abroad is you can go um, anywhere outside of the United States or even within the United States so if you want to do uh, do your research or do um, do your studies outside of campus we have tons of opportunities um, and the reason they gave me this slide as well is because this may I'm crossing my fingers. I hope that uh, that COVID lights up, lightens up a little bit. Um, I'm planning on taking a group of students to Italy, um, and we have that happening all over. Um, I've had students uh, do study abroad in Italy, in Ireland, in England. Um, you know, wherever uh, wherever you can imagine, uh, uh, Laura Neighbors can help you. You find a place that you can go. And so, uh, if that's something that you're interested in, uh, we definitely have opportunities for that. All right, and with that, I think I'm going to hand it over to Alexander, and he's going to talk to you a little bit about McKendry. All right, thank you so much. Um, apologies about some technical difficulties we faced there for a second, um, opening some four-year plans. Um, but I'm very excited to talk with you all a little bit now about uh, and show you a brief presentation about McKendry University. Um, to provide you a little more of an overview about the university and everything that um, we have to offer. Founded in 1828, McKendry University is Illinois' first institution of higher education. Located in the historic town of Lebanon, Illinois, McKendry is a private university that provides students with a combination of comprehensive coursework and experiential learning.
With a total undergraduate enrollment of 2,499 students, McHenry students represent 41 states and 38 countries. Conveniently located 30 minutes away from downtown St. Louis, McKendry offers the perfect mix of small town living and big city adventure. All right, as, um, as stated, McKendry University, we are a small private liberal arts university located in Lebanon, Illinois. Um, we have a total overall enrollment of about 2,500 students, but it's great um, because 1,300 students are enrolled here on campus as undergraduate students. And this year, they come from 40 states and 40 countries. So it's really neat because you are able to learn from each other in these small classrooms. A majority of our students come from Illinois and Missouri since St. Louis is just down the road from us. Um, after that, many of our students come throughout the Midwest, but many of our students come from states such as California, Texas, Florida, and even Alaska. Um, so it's pretty neat knowing that you'll have students from all over. And internationally, students come from six continents, ranging from Canada, Brazil, Sweden, Vietnam, and even uh, New Zealand uh, and Ghana, just to name a few of them. And it's really cool because with you have a large city half an hour away, it provides you with a large um, backyard to really run around in. And you are near so many other large cities, including uh, Chicago, Illinois is only about four and a half hours away. Kansas City, Missouri is about four and a half hours away. Memphis, Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee, um, Cincinnati, Ohio, all of these cities are in a very easy drive. Uh, so you can also do some exploring there as well. With more than 50 academic programs and over 80 clubs and co-curricular activities, McHenry offers everything students need for an incredible college experience. With an average class size of 14 and a 98% postgraduate success rate, students are guaranteed to have all their academic needs met with success right around the corner. Oh, did we forget to mention our Bearcats participate in the NCAA Division II Great Lakes Valley Conference? McHenry not only excels in academic prowess, but also athletics. And as we continue, um, as I mentioned, we are small, but there's so much to offer for our students. With over 50 academic programs, there's anything you can imagine to study, um, including, as we've already gone through tonight, fields such as communications in English and religious studies, but also we have programs in education, um, athletic training. We have a five-year program for bachelors of science to masters there. Um, psychology, biology, as well as sociology. So there's so much to learn and pick from as a student, but also being in an average class size of 14 means you are getting a lot of the support throughout your studies from professors and they can help guide you along the way. And it's great because you can still be very involved on campus and off campus as well. We have over 80 clubs and organizations to pick from, uh, to be involved in ranging from honor societies, religious organizations, volunteer groups, student government, um, to the most random clubs you could really imagine. And it's also very easy for you as a student to start one as well. Um, beyond that, we have over 30 athletic programs to pick from, um, to participate in, from football, basketball, lacrosse, soccer. Um, this year, even rugby has been added. So we're very excited because it provides you as a student this very large school atmosphere with a lot of spirit, but you're also still in a small environment that's very supportive and helpful throughout your studies here at McKendry. Would you like to become a future Bearcat? You can apply to enroll at McKendry University by following these simple steps. Submit a free application online or apply through the common application. Next, submit your official high school transcript to your admission counselor. Official SAT and ACT test results are optional for the fall 2021 academic year in order to provide more access during these unprecedented times. Fill out your free application for federal student aid, also known as FAFSA, on October 1st. McKendry school code is 001722. Housing applications open on December 1st, so be sure to fill it out to get the ball rolling on meeting your new live-in friends. During the winter, financial aid packages will be available. And last but not least, the enrollment deposit deadline is May 1st. All right, so the 
the process to really start that the process to apply to becoming a Bearcat is very um, easy for you as a student with that timeline. Our application is online at mckentry.edu and it is free, which is great. And it should only take you about 30 to 45 minutes to complete. We're also on the common application if you are looking into several schools that are also on there. It helps make that process a little less stressful for you as a student. Um, once you apply, uh, we just need your high school transcript. It's that simple. Um, your school counselor can send it to us. We do not require the SAT or ACT this year, which is pretty nice. And we've made several changes, including for academic scholarships in order uh, for you to be eligible for them. We understand the challenges of getting access to the ACT or SAT. Uh, and we wanna be able to support you because of that. With the FAFSA, it is great, the free application for federal student aid. That is something that you can go online and fill out at fafsa.gov. And with that, you can send that to quite a few schools. And should you send it to McKendry, we will receive it. So once you are admitted, we're able to start on working on a unique financial aid package for you. And those packages will start going out in mid-December. So here within the next few weeks. The housing application opened yesterday on December 1st here at McKendry. So it is great. You've made that commitment to attend. You can log in um, and apply. If not, if you haven't, that's great. You can still start that process. I want to let you know that you will have to make your deposit to commit to McKendry University before you're able to fill that out. It is a non-refundable uh, $400 deposit. $200 will go towards tuition and $200 will go towards housing. Um, and if you have questions about that, you can always let us know here in the Office of Admission. And last is that enrollment deposit deadline, and that is May 1st. That is National um, Deposit Day, and that's schools all throughout the country. Um, really have set that date for you as a high school student to make that decision and inform us where you intend to go. McKendry University is a place with so much to offer. From the residential experience to state-of-the-art classrooms, McKendry offers all the amenities to shape your university experiences in an amazing way. But don't just take our word for it. Take a look at what some of our students have to say. Every single faculty member wants that personal connection with their students. Our average class size is between 10 and 14. The professor knows your name, so they know your strengths. They'll recommend you for different groups, they'll recommend you for different programs, and they are just phenomenal. Having these smaller classes, it makes it very easy to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. It's easier to ask questions of the class. Every day they walk into the classroom and they see a professor who is passionate and inspired, and that is contagious. All right, we wanted to provide you with an option to hear a little bit um, from students and some professors, a little bit about really the collaboration opportunities you have in and out of the classroom here at McKendry. And the faculty tonight have already demonstrated that very well. Um, I'd say Dr. Trask being able to provide on her experience as a student here and coming back as a faculty member, especially. But it is great because with these small classes, you really have a chance to learn from your professor, gain that mentorship, and they can help you when you are looking for internship or research opportunities, whether it is on campus in the St. Louis area, or if you're going back home and looking for opportunities there all throughout the country, that's what professors can do here. And it is neat um, what some of the professors do with the psych Department of Psychology. A lot of the professors tend to do research with their students every year. So you're, those students are getting that practical experience doing research, knowing what they, what else they can do with their degree and being able to even travel to conferences and really present it and really develop uh, the skills needed for either graduate school or if they are just looking to develop their resume a little more and go into the workforce after they graduate. And those opportunities don't just last, last in the Department of Psychology, they're all over campus. So we really do enjoy that um, for you, the student. As previously mentioned, McKendry offers more than 50 academic programs, 
and our caring faculty and staff are ready to help you find your passion. A support network is already in place for you at McKendry. Student services are a large part of the McKendry community as we are dedicated to the continuous growth and success of all our students. Services include a student success and advising center equipped with tutors, a career services center with advisors that can help you plan for the future, and public safety officers available 24 seven. One of the most important factors in choosing a college or university is cost. Well, at McKendra University, we believe that higher education should be affordable. It is for this reason that we award over $24 million in institutional aid annually. We also offer a variety of scholarships, like the Dean's, the Presidential, and the Honors Scholarship. And with that, just want to expand a little more. Um, earlier, I had mentioned financial aid at McKendry, and that process is as a small school, it is great because we in the admission office are able to work with you as a prospective student and your family throughout this very lengthy and often uh, confusing big decision making aspect uh, for where you plan to continue your education. And we have changed our academic scholarships for you, the student, to really uh, be able to not worry as much about the ACT or SAT this year. And with our three tiers, you could receive upon admission between ten and seventeen thousand dollars per year towards your academics, and that's not all you will receive as a student. When we go through this process, we will meet um, and discuss other co-curricular scholarships you may be eligible for, other grants, forms of aid that we want to present to you to make McKendry affordable, and then one of us in the admission office will follow up with you and anyone who is making this decision with you to really understand what the investment will be for you to continue your education, because that's what we want to be able to present to you um, as a future Bearcat. Um, so that is our presentation and then just had a few questions from our students, um, our participants um, for you as a faculty, only two or three um, that you may be able to answer a little bit. And one of them um, that really stood out, they are wondering what is the opportunity for you for a student to, to pick up another major, whether it is within the department, um, the division of humanities within one of your departments. And if so, are there any other majors that a student may pick up along with, whether it is English or communications or philosophy, anything like that? Sure, I'll take that one, I guess, if that's okay with you guys. Yeah, um, I will say a lot of our majors actually do pick up double majors. Um, and sometimes it's within the humanities. And so I have uh, a couple actually English and um, and communication majors, for example. Um, uh, I have one that's a philosophy and communication major. I'm sure, uh, Dr. DeWall, you have several in, in yours that are double major as well. And so it is, it is absolutely possible. Um, and, and there's only, I think there's only a handful of majors on campus that you can't double up on. And, and we can talk about those individually um, if you'd like. But yeah, most of them, uh, the way our the way the 120 credits to graduate are, are set up, uh, you, we have uh, 50 some that are gen ed, uh, and then we have our majors, right? And so um, we can definitely work on that. And again, we, I know we've, we've said this several times, but uh, because we don't have you know, thousands of majors uh, to deal with, um, uh, we are, we're very flexible, right? And so if you come to me, for example, and say, Rich, I wanna be an event planner, um, and, and I want a double major in comm and marketing, I say, all right, let's do this. And we will, you know, we, we can double, we can count this course uh, towards both classes, but then take this one for my major, take this one for the, uh, the marketing. And so uh, tons of different ways that you can, you can do that. I mean, in fact, we encourage it uh, because, uh, you know, that's, we talk about liberal arts as, as Dr. Dual did so eloquently. I, I think that's what we're, we're looking at as well. All right, great. And um, this next one's a little, a little a bit of a step back from that, actually. Um, 
and it's more of what would be for a student who's interested in majoring within one of the within one of the humanities what would be a nice compatible minor for them whether it is for something that is outside of the humanities well, I can answer that one. So um, one of the things that faculty members at McKendree do, we, of course, we teach and, and everything, but we also advise. So we have students who we work very closely with, and um, we advise them from the very beginning all the way until the time they walk across the stage of graduation. So what I usually do, if a student is interested in, in taking on a minor, basically we talk about like what their dreams of the future are. So if you could imagine yourself in any career, what would be your dream career? And if they say, well, you know, I, I think art therapy would be cool. I say, okay, so you're already an art major. Let's add a psychology minor, which is completely doable at McKendree. Um, you know, if they say, well, I always kind of wanted to be a record producer and I'm already a music major, I say, okay, let's go ahead and get a management or a business minor. Um, so that's one way to go about it is to combine two seemingly disparate fields and um, in order to produce a student who can have a particular career. The other thing that I've noticed is that sometimes students just want to add a minor for fun, right? Because it's something that they really love. They might not want to do it professionally, they might not want to do it for a career, but um, it's something that they're passionate about. So maybe I have a student who is majoring in economics, but loves writing poetry on the weekends. Let's add a creative writing minor. Um, that's something that you can do at McKendry as well. And that, like Dr. Murphy said, that is something that we absolutely encourage because we have this liberal arts approach and we believe in educating the whole person. All right. Um, and I am a little curious from one last question. From a faculty standpoint for a student that is going through this process, what would be, what would you encourage a student to do while they are navigating um, the college search, which is a little crazy on occasion, especially this year? I will attempt to this. I encourage students to step a little bit outside of their comfort zone and meet the faculty and meet students. And I know COVID makes these Zooms very, uh, maybe not awkward anymore, um, but I know that the faculty would love for a student uh, who's looking at McKendry to join one of their classes. I would love to have students physically come into a class of mine and just get the feel of what it's like to be at McKendry. Now, if physically isn't the possibility because of COVID, many opportunities exist right now for wherever you are across the globe to be able to zoom into a class. And so I would encourage students to maybe push what's comfortable, but to join our classes and to, to reach out to the faculty and be accepting and open to the opportunity. Because I think the best way to choose a college uh, or a university is to figure out what fits and what feels right. And the best way to do that is to have that one-on-one -on -one encounter with people that you're going to have those encounters with regularly. All right, great, thank you. Thank you. Um, those are the questions I have for today. Uh, and all been incredibly knowledgeable, very helpful, and thank you so much for your time. And that, uh, we will end this webinar. And please, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us here in the Office of Admission. Um, you can call 1-800-BEAR-CAT. It's probably the fastest way. Um, and we'll be able to help you, help you get taken care of. I hope you have a great night.